Hi and welcome to my channel. My name is Emma Lemke and in this video I want to share with you my journey to falling pregnant with baby number two. So I did upload a video of me finding out that I was pregnant with that with this baby that I'm currently growing and yeah if you want to go watch it go and watch it before you watch this video but I'm going to share with you my journey what went on for the last 12 months as I've waited for a positive pregnancy test. But before I share my journey with you, I just want to say that I have a baby. Her name is Eden. She's a to toddler now. She's nearly two in February. And I am just so beyond grateful that I'm a mum and that I have a child. I have a baby. I know that my story is one of many and many, many stories that don't have the same outcomes that my story has. I know that this is a sensitive topic, so I want to be sensitive with the way that I approach it. And I know that my story seems quite small and insignificant to the very painful stories that I hear and that women are going through. I feel like my story can fall on two different ears. Like one ear is, wow, like that took you so long to fall pregnant. That would have been really hard. And the other set of ears is like only 12 months. Like it took me three years or it took me six years or I never ever fell pregnant. So there are, there is such a vast array of stories out there and I want to be sensitive to that as I share. But I do hope that maybe my experience will encourage others who are going through the same experience as me. I know for me there were stories on YouTube that really helped me as I was in this valley of waiting for baby number two. Anyway, here we go. Let me share my story. So Eden was born February 2021. In September of that year, I felt like I was ready to have another baby. And I wanted to have my babies close together because my sister and I are 13 months apart. That's really close. I didn't necessarily need, you know, my kids to be that close, but I still wanted them to be close. We started trying in September hoping that I would fall pregnant and be able to have a baby this year in 2022. That didn't happen, <laughs> but he, here's my story. So we tried September, October, November, December, January. By then I'm like, hmm, this is taking longer than I expected. Like with Eden, it took about four to six months. So I wasn't panicking at this point, but I was like, hmm, maybe I need to take this more seriously. Maybe I need to start like tracking my ovulation. Like I was tracking my periods, but I wanted to know when my, when I was ovulating. So I went to the supermarket and I got those ovulation strips. And in some ways that was kind of discouraging because I realized that I was definitely correct. Like where I thought my fertile window was, was where my fertile window was. I thought maybe that I just got the timing wrong and those ovulation strips would help me just to, to get the timing right and to really understand when my window of opportunity was. But it turns out that I already was aware, I was reading my body correctly and I was ovulating when I thought I was and that's when we were trying to conceive but it just wasn't happening. February, March, April, April, I'm starting to feel quite discouraged. It starts to be something that's constantly on my mind. Like, will I, won't I, what if just trying to reimagine my life if things don't go the way that I've always pictured and envis envisioned. And I so desperately wanted to give Eden a sibling like a brother or a sister, and I just felt like time was ticking by. So that's April. May, 
then June and I was at this point just feeling the pain and the burden of not conceiving. What is going on? Will I not be able to have the family that I've dreamed of having? Will I need to adopt? Like I know it takes years to, to make adoption happen. Like do I need to start, you know, start doing this process and like, because I, I want to have children to nurture. Like I, I just, that, you know, once you become a mother, like that nurturing spirit, and I think all women have this nurturing spirit, but it just becomes so real and you want to ex like expand that and have more people to nurture in your life. So yeah, I'm thinking about adoption, all sorts of things at this point. I know that many watching who are struggling to conceive and fall pregnant probably feel this way too. So it feels long. Like a month feels so long. You're waiting for your fertile window, trying to conceive. Then you're waiting for the testing window of when you can like have do the pregnancy test. You're taking a pregnancy test. You're getting a negative result. But then you're second guessing, like, did I take it too early? Maybe you'll just wait a little bit longer Then you get another negative test. And then your period comes and that's like confirmation. And it's like discouragement every month when you get your period, you just like flat, like I got my period again. And then you're waiting again for that ovulation time and that fertile window. You're trying and then you're waiting again, like, did it work? Am I pregnant this time? You're reading all the signs and you're second guessing like, I'm moody, I'm tired, I'm this, does that mean I'm pregnant? And it's just such a roller coaster of emotions. Just, you know, yeah, just every month that goes past is feels like time is just getting away from you. And it's just, it really does your head in. Yeah, I felt pretty pathetic actually. I was like, you know, get a grip, like be positive. Emma. Like my husband Blair was super positive the whole way through. Like we'll be right. We'll fall pregnant just in God's timing. Like he was kind of like, whenever God wants us to have another baby, we'll have it. So it was in this time of real struggle that I started to think about like, maybe I should share my journey with others. Like maybe there's people who are going through this journey right now and it would be helpful to open up and to share this journey with others and it was interesting I was having my devotions in the morning and I came across a verse um, that really spoke to me and spoke to that and it was in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 25 and 26 it says the Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul who seeks him it is good that one should hope and wait for this wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. There was so much in this verse. Like when I read it, I was like, whoa, wait. Like what God is calling to me right now in this season is just to wait, to wait for him. So verse 24, the Lord is good. It was just this reminder, the Lord is good. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. Wait, Emma, just wait, have patience, have patience. And to the soul who seeks him. And I was like, man, I need to, I need to seek God in this season. I need him to be the God of my life, to be the one that I go to with my struggles here. And that was where verse six, um, 26 really spoke to me. It says, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly. So have hope. And hope and pray that you will get the positive result that you want and that God will come through in the way that he has planned for your life. And so I begin to just rest in the fact that whatever happens here, I know that God has got this, that he might have different plans for me. He might have better, more amazing plans for me. And I just need to rest in his goodness knowing that he's good, knowing that he's perfect and loving and cares for me, cares for Eden, cares for Blair. And it says to wait, to hope and wait 
quietly, quietly, I was like, okay, I think God is telling me that I need to use this time to seek him, to quietly wait and be patient, to not share my struggles with everyone else and to use this time just to bear my burdens to the world and yeah, just, and, and to talk about my struggles and make this about me. I need to use this time to seek him and his will for my life, whatever that is. And that really spoke to me. And because I was planning on doing a YouTube video on this way earlier, but when I read that, I was like, no, I'm going to wait. And when I fall pregnant, if I fall pregnant, that's when I'm going to share my journey. And I'm going to share how God was good to me throughout this journey and what God taught me. And I had already been speaking to a few of my friends about my journey. So I continued to have them in, in my inner circle instead of just like publicly, you know, pronouncing what was going on and talking about my struggle. I felt like I needed just to keep it to that, that inner circle that I was sharing with, which happened to me cousins or all family and to talk to God. That is what I did. And when I say that, no, I did not do that perfectly. I am a human. Yes, I'm a Christian, but I don't always find time for God. And I don't always call on him. And I do slip up and I make mistakes. And I do share with people, like I made mistakes. But of course, another month goes by and I don't fall pregnant. And as human as I am, I try and take it into my own hands. I'm like, Googling frantically how to fall pregnant, what I need to do, like how can I increase the chances of conceiving, all this stuff. You know what it's like when you have something going on in your, in your life for whatever reason. We think Google is our savior and we go to Google for advice. <laughs> um, so what I read on Google, I read something interesting about acupuncture and I was like, hmm, acupuncture, that's interesting. Maybe I could give that a go. So I heard that a lot of IVF patients who were trying to conceive and have like a fertile egg implanted would also do IVF. And there were so many like positive reports about how acupuncture and like the links between acupuncture and positive fertility journeys. So I did my research. I found an acupuncturist and a Chinese herbalist in my area and I booked an appointment. I went to the appointment and I was like a little bit hesitant because I didn't really know anything about acupuncture. I'd never read anything about it before. So I went there. It was a beautiful Chinese lady. She didn't speak hardly any English. So she was really like abrupt and I didn't quite understand what she was saying. <laughs> um, but she was like, come with me we're going to make like, this is going to be fine. We're going to make this happen. I was like, okay. So she laid me on this bed. She stuck needles in all the places where I like, like there was in my arms, my legs, my, my tummy. And I just laid there for like an hour with these needles in. And then I went back to her office. She gave me these bag of herbs and gave me instructions to drink morning and night. So basically I was boiling these herbs for like over half an hour and drinking them morning and night. And then she wanted me to go back three days later. I went back, did another session of acupuncture, got the herbs again and started doing the herbs for another three days. And that, at that point I was like, you know, I'm going to update my inner circle, my three cousins, besties, um, or oh, sorry, my two cousins and my sister and let them know what's going on, like what my journey is. At that time, I also got a blood test just to make sure my levels were all fine. And I had booked an appointment with my naturopath to have a look over my levels. So I messaged my two cousins and my sister and I said, this is what I'm doing. And in my actual words, I said, I'm putting my trust in this Chinese lady the acupuncturist because she drives a Mercedes. <laughs> so this lady was wealthy. She had like a book this thick of testimonials of people that were cured from cancer, from 
all sorts of stuff. And I was like, I'm putting my trust in this lady. The next day, I didn't hear from one of my cousins, but the next day she sent me a voice message. And in that voice message, she opens up to me and says, Emma, I want to share something with you with the hopes that it doesn't offend you, but I feel like God's really put this on my heart to share with you. She starts talking about her own fertility journey, which is an incredible one to actually hear. And I'd love her to, to share that with you guys. Um, but she shares her journey and she shares about how she tried to take it into her own hands by what she ate and what she, what she did in the exercise to the point where she took it to an extreme. And she spoke about how she felt like she needed to surrender all of that to God and just give all of her fertility journey, her pregnancy journey to God. And I was like, oh, ding, 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 ding. Like that really resonated with me. But rewind, the reason it resonated with me so much, and I was like, I feel like God is speaking to me right now, is because the night before, I had just watched a YouTube video with Tori and Chad Masters talking about their fertility journey. And Tori says a similar thing. She talks about it wasn't until she fully surrendered her journey to God that she fell pregnant. And she also spoke about how she didn't have any intervention. She just decided that she wanted to give the glory to God. And so she gave everything to God. She surrendered all of it to God. And it was when she fully surrendered was when she fell pregnant. So I had watched that YouTube video. It really spoke to me and challenged me. And I was like, is this what God's wanting me to do? Is he wanting me to just give up this stuff? And so that was in my mind. And then the next day I get this message from my cousin, Amy. And then unrelated to what I was going through, I got another message from a friend who didn't know the situation that I was going through, but I had watched my breastfeeding vlog. And she wrote in her message, isn't it interesting how sometimes we make health an idol? And I was like, oh. So it was like the three things, the video, the voice message from my cousin, and then this text message saying, isn't it interesting how we make health an idol? And it's so true. Like sometimes as Christians, we can, like, because we're meant, like God's calling us to look after our bodies. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Taking good care of our health is such an important thing, but sometimes we can make that an idol. And I was definitely making that an idol for, you know, hoping to fall pregnant. And the thing is, if I had fallen pregnant at that point, I would have been like, this and this worked. Like, this is what I did with my nutrition. This is what I did with the acupuncture, like this acupuncturist lady, like I went to her and then I fell pregnant. It was amazing. She's incredible. Monday night, I watched the YouTube video. Tuesday, I got these messages. And then I had this appointment booked for Thursday. I was like, man, what do I do? Like, do I cancel this acupuncture appointment? Like, it was a lot of money I was spending. It was like over $100 every session. So I was like, well, what is it that God wants me to do? Like, these are the stories of people. This was the story of Tori. This was the story of Amy. But what is my story? Like, what is it that God is trying to tell me? I'm like, duh. It was really clearly trying to tell me something. The next morning in my devotions, I was asking God and praying. And I just said, Lord, help me to know what is it that you want me to do? What is a story that you're writing in my life? I open up this devotional that I was reading through at the time by Oswald Chambers, the utmost highest, amazing devotional book. And the devotional for that day was on waiting on God. <sighs> I was like, okay, God. <laughs> I think you've made it clear. You want me to give this over to you. And so that morning I emailed the acupuncturist and said, I'm not going to come in on Thursday. And I've decided that to not continue with acupuncture anymore. I did that with so much fear because I had read like books this thick of testimonials of people falling pregnant after five, six years going to this acupuncturist. But I was like, okay, 
God is telling me to like give this up. And what I was kind of in turmoil with at the time was I also had a naturopath appointment who looked at my at looked at my blood results and was like, your iron is really, really low. This could contribute to the reason that you're not falling pregnant. I think you need to take an iron supplement. So I was like, oh, like, is God telling me not to take the iron supplement as well? And so I was kind of like praying about that and in turmoil. And what I felt really clearly and convicted of was, yes, take the iron supplement because there is data and knowledge that God has given you right now. You've done the blood test. You're low in iron. You need to take an iron supplement. Like that was pretty clear. Whereas when I was going to the acupuncturist, I had no idea what she was doing. I had no idea what the herbs were. I literally, like I wasn't basing it on any knowledge that God had given me. I was just going because like just literally putting my trust in the acupuncturist and going if I fall pregnant like acupuncture worked I knew that I wouldn't fall pregnant that month because if I did I would just give all the praise to the acupuncturist and then start recommending to anyone who was struggling to go and get acupuncture and not to recommend them to give it to God and to surrender it to him and his timing and to use this waiting as a journey of faith and growing with God and your relationship with him. Because I think that this is what the journey did for me. It took me on a journey where I had to put my faith and trust in God. And it was really faith building for me. And it was a real relationship builder as well. So I'm so grateful, even though the journey was hard, I'm so grateful that God saw fit to take me on this journey like he did so many women in the Bible who struggled with fertility. I just felt like, I, in, in many ways, I felt honored. <laughs> it's like, thank you, God, for giving me this story and this journey. So I knew that that month I wouldn't fall pregnant and I didn't. I got my period and I wasn't one bit surprised nor disappointed really because I think if I did fall pregnant, I would have been like, confused like maybe the acupuncture did work maybe you know um but no i didn't fall pregnant and it was that month that our family went through a really really difficult and challenging time and that's when blair's dad passed away you know i think that maybe that's one of many reasons that god has for the, for his timing and to be able to then fall pregnant the next month and to share that positive news with Blair's mum, with Blair, like after they had gone through so much and was still going through, like, man, like <laughs> grief is a journey. It's not something that, you know, happens one month and is gone the next. Like it's a journey to be able to share that positive news through that journey was such a beautiful gift that I was able to give. In summary, what I want to share is that God is good and his will is his, it's, it's good and pleasing and perfect. In Romans chapter 12, it talks about God's will and that's how it describes God's will for our lives. And I truly believe that with all my heart, whatever the circumstances that you're going through, whatever the outcome that you get, God has a beautiful plan for your life, a beautiful plan for your family. It may not be what you're expecting. It might be something different, but his will is beautiful. So in um, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, To not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It might look different to the world. It might be different to what you imagined or your expectations. But if you're living in God's will and his timing for your life, it's going to be good. It's going to be perfect. I love that promise of God. And I just want to encourage you in this season of waiting 
to draw close to God, to draw near to him, to seek him in this time, to hope in him, to wait quietly and take it to the Lord in prayer. And he really will come through. I know that this might seem rich coming from me because I received the outcome that I wanted. I got that positive pregnancy result. And I know that there will be women that don't get that positive pregnancy result. But I want to share a promise, another promise from God's word. And just encourage you to lean into the promises of God and to... Claim them in prayer and claim them, claim them in your life and have faith knowing that God will follow through. It might look different, but it will be good. Romans 8 verse 28 says, oh, where is it? And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. So we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. So I just want to encourage you that my story might look different to yours, but whatever your story is, you're going to have a story to share about God's faithfulness because he is good and he is in this moment and this time with you. And I just want to encourage you to lean into him and draw close to him during this time. So if you like this video, I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel, to like it, to comment below, share with me your thoughts on your journey. I'd love to hear if you're going through this as well. But thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.